Good day, fellow learners. This is your mentor, your fact check buddy, once again joining you for another teaching and learning session here in our YouTube channel, MCLEX RN by Gapos Mentors. Of course, headed by yours truly, Ray Gapos. Please, when you attend the class, for you to be able to be sure that that is really a Ray Gapos class, I have to be there. Okay? You have to see me. So let's begin our pointer session number 11. Okay. So join our thousands of pastors from around the world. Text or call 0906 to 019383 or email us at info at com. So before now this time, let's learn from our pastor from Benguet State University, Chelsea May Kim, who is now a USRN, and she passed the next generation NCLEX test last May 31, 2023. Here's what Kim has to say, Ms. Kim has to say, I actually started my NCLEX journey in 2020 with GAPAS Review, but unfortunately had to put it off due to the pandemic. When I finally had the chance to relive my dream in 2023, GAPAS family gladly assisted me with my review, even when I'm currently living at the other side of the world. I didn't pay any additional fees. That's how our program is. You can get it unlimited. Although it has been three years, everything is in the review is in the review from the lecture sessions to the question bank. We do offer the queue bank and that's through our course shell that's gonna be included in the program. Really helpful. Not to mention the free three-day quick fix session with Sir Ray that I attended a few days before my exam. Gapos review made NCLEX seem so much easier than I imagined it to be. Thank you so much to Sir Gapus, the mentors and everyone in the Gapus family for helping me achieve my dream. God bless us all. Thank you very much. Chelsea May Kim, you're now a USRN. And for those who are aspiring to be one, follow what she shared with us. And that is just to believe in your dream and never stop chasing it. Till our next passer, RN. Now, here we go. Your favorite part of our pointer session, my expert opinion on what do you need to study for your exam. So... Let's begin. Okay. Now, here it is. The first one is Clostridium difficile. Remember, C. diff, in short, is a bacterial infection. Now, there are three common risk factors. Remember, PEP. One is prolonged hospitalization. Two, E, elderly patient, meaning those who are above 65 years old are most at risk. And then the third one, you have prolonged antibiotics treatment. So in essence, those who are elderly on prolonged hospitalization and they are on prolonged antibiotics like a patient with COVID, then you are most at risk to Clostridium difficile. Now, how would you know that you have C. diff? The common symptom would be diarrhea that could be both watery and bloody. And of course, since this is a bacterial infection, your patient will have very high fever Then eventually they have loss of appetite. And because of the diarrhea, they lose a lot of weight. Now, what is the cornerstone of management in terms of preventing the spread of C. diff. Remember, the wearing of gloves is most important. Now, a patient in C. diff should be placed in which type of isolation precaution that's going to be contact. So the use of down in gloves is very important, but the cornerstone of prevention of spread would be the use or the wearing of gloves by both the healthcare workers and the visitor should always should also wear your gown and your gloves when they visit the patient, especially if they're, be, if they're going to touch anything from the patient's room, okay? Now for mild cases, since Clostridium difficile is associated with um, prolonged treatment with antibiotics, what physicians would usually do sometimes for mild cases is that they stop the antibiotic that's causing it. However, your Clostridium difficile is best managed with vancomycin that's used for treatment that's usually given every six hours and of course your metronidazole so remember vm okay vancomycin and metronidazole okay now next important thing that you have to remember would be your mmr vaccine now this is given in two doses the first dose is given at 12 to 15 months the second dose between four to six years of age what do i want to highlight regarding your mmr vaccine Remember that your, some of the contraindications would include the following. One would be 
allergy to neomycin. Why? Because when they're preparing this vaccine, a uh, small amount of the antibiotic is used in order to prevent contamination of the vaccine. So in, in which case, the vaccine has a component of your neomycin. So if the patient is allergic to antibiotics, chances are they could also be allergic to neomycin, which is used to prevent contamination of MMR vaccine. Now, your MMR vaccine um, could be made of live attenuated virus vaccine. That's why you have to administer it with caution in patients with who, who are immunocompromised, meaning um, those who are having chemotherapy or steroid therapy, you have to clear it with the physician whether giving the vaccine is a, is a better option. Now, for pregnant patients, it has to be clear, clarified too. And for those who are immunocompromised because of the presence of HIV infection. But don't forget, the most common contraindication would be allergy to neomycin. Next is your pediculosis, okay, or infestation with lice. Now, remember, what do you want to recall when you're taking the test related to this concept? How is it transmitted? The most common transmission is the sharing of hair accessories or hair articles that could include your hat, your scarves, even including your combs and towels. So therefore, it's very important that if you have towels which you think was used by somebody with pediculosis, you need to wash it in hot water or you have to have it um, air, uh, dried using hot air and then dry clean or seal it in a plastic bag for two weeks. Okay, So since there is also a potential that the hair with the nits okay, or the eggs of the lice could fall off the floor. So vacuuming the house could be appropriate, but there is no need to fumigate the house. So do not fumigate the house because that could potentially be toxic, especially if inhaled by people in the house. So now, what type of isolation precautions do we need to implement? Contact precautions, which means the gown and the use of gloves will be required. And this is strictly monitored until 24 hours after initial treatment with um, medications. Now, all contacts and all household members must be treated with your permethrin lotion. This is very, very important in order to kill the needs. Now, take note that your uh, quell shampoo that is used to be given to the patient um, has been identified as neurotoxic and it has been found that these are not considered pediculicide anymore. So which simply means um, this could just be alternative treatments. So the main treatment would be the use of your permethrin lotion and the use of fine tooth comb after. Now, there's also another solution that could potentially kill the lies, for example, um, benzyl alcohol. Okay, which kills the lice by asphyxation, not um, through other means. And then, of course, ivermectin lotion could also be used. Now, take note that your chlorine does not kill the head lice. However, find comfort in the fact that your pediculosis is also not transmitted through swimming. Okay, so it's not a guarantee that if your swimming pool is chlorinated, then you will not have pediculosis. If you're using the same towels as the, as the other people who are swimming, then there's a great chance that you could also have it. Now, how would you know that the patient has pediculosis? Well, okay, observe for ISSI, meaning itching, scratching, sores in the head because of continuous scratching and irritability because they lack sleep because they always scratch their head. Now, this is a very, very important um, observation, okay? So the symptom could eventually become behavioral because of the lack of sleep of the person. So those are the things that I'd like to highlight. Don't forget the second important thing, study using technology. Remember, at the Ray Gapo system, our tools are world-class. And of course, our latest technology tool, you have the Ray Gapo's shells that covers all the subjects on the NCLEX. So 
please give us a call to find out how you can qualify to access this for free, okay? So, and the third, you have to be in a conducive environment. It should, be, it should keep your sense of focus. This is our AA GAPUS NCLEX simulation room located at the second floor of the Ray GAPUS building here in UN Avenue. And this is how intimate and comfortable our class is, okay? So, may I invite you to avail of our next generation NCLEX RN Flex, the most flexible test prep class for the NCLEX RN. Your choice of live face-to-face -face class, live virtual class, on-demand and limited video recorded lessons, your QBank and three books, and the NGN strategies and sample questions by me. Okay. Plus, you'll see me again in a quick fix session. That's a 24-hour session, um, eight days, uh, sorry, eight hours per day. Okay. So you have a total of three days. And the fee starts at 3499 So we have available schedules, weekdays, both in the morning and or in the afternoon. Weekend classes, that's going to be whole day classes on a Saturday and Sunday. Give us a call at 906 or send us a message at our email, info at ragaposreview.com. So once again, this is your mentor, your fact check buddy, Ray Gapos, saying thank you for joining me today and I'll see you back in my next video for more of our NCLEX NGN pointers. <laughs>